Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever time it is is a great time to learn. Hello everyone, I'm Zen Cheng, and today we will be discussing simple internet navigation. But first off, we have to define two key terms. First off, what is a network? A network is when two or more computers or servers are linked together such that they can communicate and share data. An example of a network is, everyone's favorite, the internet. So what makes a network necessary? In today's world, a network provides an efficient way for people to communicate, share, and access information from anywhere they can get a connection to a network. Without networks, we wouldn't have Facebook, Google, email, all sorts of good stuff would be gone if we didn't have networks. Many organizations and individuals have their own local area networks used for internal access. It may use a firewall for connection to wide area networks and the internet for both business and personal use. Our second key term is a server. Now, what is a server? Think of a server as, oh, I don't know, a big amount of digital storage space. It's really open-ended. It can be used for a lot of varying things. Most everything on the internet uses a server in one fashion or another. So, for example, many of us have emails. Well, let's pretend you use Gmail. Google stores all of your emails on a server so that you can access it whenever you need to. Facebook stores all of your posts on a server so that you can access those whenever you need to as well. As you can see, servers and networks are very, very, very useful. But now I would like to try and explain how the internet works. And to do that, I've prepared two wonderful illustrations. Now, I know, I know what you're saying. Zen, are you an artist? <laughs> well, let's just say I'm good at computers and I'm good at art. So this is our, pretend this is the internet. Right here. This whole thing is the internet. On the internet, there are only two computers and three servers, as per this diagram. You ever hear the internet being called the World Wide Web? Well, there's a reason for it. As soon as you connect to the internet, you can potentially access everything else that's connected to the internet as well. And once you begin to connect the dots, then, well, it starts to look a little bit like a web. Now, I'm going to try and explain some of the internet's basic features and functionality. So, what are some of the things we love to do using the internet? Well, I, for one, love to play video games. I know many of us enjoy browsing, browsing Facebook, checking our email, so on and so forth. But regardless, most internet-enabled services all have the same basic function. So, for example, let's pretend this is my computer right here. Hello. Let's say, oh, I don't know, I want to browse a wonderful site called Securing Our eCity, right? So, how, how's this going to go down? Well, many of us know that we just need to put in the URL into the hotbar. Wait a second, then it's going to load, right? But what just actually happened? Well, let's try and explain it a little. So, this being my computer... I put in the URL, my browser sends out a request looking for securing our eCity site. So it sends out the request and, ah, it hits securing our eCity server. Look at that. So my request is sent all the way to the server and then the server says, oh, you want to access our site? Okay then. Then it sends back data over to my computer. There you go. It's that simple. But you may be asking, oh, but how does it know what site I actually want to access? Well, that's simple as well. There's this thing called a URL. A URL is a uniform resource locator, which enables us to use text to identify addresses on the internet. So, for example, google.com is a URL. A URL's basic format is protocol, hostname, and other information. As you can see, the protocol here with Google, sorry, one second, with Google is HTTPS, see, right there. But if we go to another site, such as Bing, we'll find that their protocol is HTTP. Let's go back to the Google example for a second. You'll see now that the hostname Google is registered in the .com level, top level domain. And if we go back to our basic layout for all these things, other information is just subordinate content. So, for example, if we went to, let's say, bbc.com, bbc.com, we wait for it to load. Now look at the URL right now. Pay attention. Then, let's go to let's say, sports. I want to know what's going on in sports. You wait for it to signal load, and look. Now we have sports as part of the subordinate information. These little slashes here are used to further segment down the site and categorize it, the information in such a way that makes it easier to access. Now, going back to our example here, Google and Bing, you'll find that not all websites service HTTP, but rather they also service HTTPS. You might be asking yourself, well, what's the difference between HTTPS and HTTP? HTTPS simply confirms authentication of a server in order to protect the confidentiality, integrity, and privacy of a net information sent over networks. 
So with Google, technically speaking, it's a little more secure than Bing because it uses the HTTPS protocol. Now, the last part of a URL is the domain name. You may find that there are a lot of domain names. There's a .com, there's .net, and well, what is a domain name? A domain name is used simply to, for many reasons. One, you might want to use a domain name because you want to be specific about what kind of website it is. So, for example, some common domain names are .com, .org, .net, .int, .edu, .gov, .mil. And, well, these are pretty self-explanatory. .com is for commercial, .org is for, organi for an organization, so on and so forth. Even countries have their own domains. And this also proves useful because if you ever had wanted to have two sites with the same name, they can have the same name but different domain names, such that they can have their own unique identity. Well, that's it for today. Hope to see you again soon. Learn more at www.securingrecity.org.